Castino, I'm a physical therapist here at People Fit Health and Fitness Center. Uh, if you've done my class before, welcome back. If you have not done this type of exercise before, you might want to check with your doctor before doing any new form of exercise. Uh, with that, let's get started. We're going to do a little warm up to get started this morning. Let's do some nice neck rolls in one direction. Try to make your head come off of your shoulders. You may hear a little snap, crackle, and pop. If there's no pain associated with it, just go nice and light. Great, let's go the opposite direction. Great. We'll do some arm circles now. Everything that we do in this class is in an athletic position, which means what? Feet are wide, bottoms out, knees are soft, belly button is tight. If this bothers your shoulders, you can circle down low. But now let's go in the opposite direction. Stern them up towards the ceiling and knees are bent. Great, and let's come back and forth. All right, and we'll do some marching in place. Beautiful day here today. Hopefully uh, you guys can get out for a walk. I went for a nice run this morning before work. Good way to start the day. Good. Feet nice and wide, bottom out, belly button's tight, and we're going to gently rotate side to side. For you golfers, this is a good warm-up. You can envision you hitting it 200 yards out there. <coughs> Great. If you need something to hold on to, being near a counter or a wall is absolutely fine. But let's start off with your feet about hips width apart. We're gonna come back onto your heels and up onto your toes. Heels and toes. When you come back onto your heels, just make sure you're not sticking your bottom out. It should be an effort to pull those toes up off the floor uh, without sticking your bottom out, but we're gonna keep on going up and down. You do not have to do all the repetition, so just do what is comfortable for you. If you have things like plantar fasciitis, just make sure to go nice and easy on these. In five, four, three, two, and one. Great, okay. And from here, let's do this. Let's bring your arm out to the side, hands on your hips. Let's drag one leg out and back. If you need to touch on to something, fine. Toes are pointing straight ahead. Let's come on out and back. Out and back for five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent, let's go to the other side. Hand on your hip, let's draw one leg out and back. If you could do it again, without bringing your foot back down to the ground, even better, that's obviously a little bit more of a challenge. Good, for five, four, three, two, and one, great. We're gonna to try to find a uh, foot position that's comfortable for you. The easiest is with your feet together. The most next challenging is your heel to the inside of your big toe. And the most challenging is one foot directly in front of the other. Find a position that works for you. And I'm gonna start off with the heel to the inside of my big toe. And we're gonna turn your head left and right. So which position do you find? Keep on turning your head left and right. We're gonna find a position that makes your feet wiggle a little bit, but that you don't have to step too often, okay? Every time you wiggle and you, you kind of lose balance and you catch yourself, 
you're working on those balance reactions, so this is a good thing. Okay, can you just check out what's going on here? Someone had a comment. I think I just muted everyone. All right, let's switch feet. Good, and we're gonna do the same thing. Turning head left and right. If that was easy for you, maybe bring the foot directly in front of the other. If it's too much of a challenge, get a little space between your feet. In five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. Okay. We're going to go back to your heel and toe raises. This time we're going to do them with your toes slightly out. Okay? So again, come up onto those toes and back on your heels. Toes and heels. Toes and heels. Um, if you can, when you're coming up onto your toes, try to grip with your toes as if you're grabbing the bottom of your sneakers or the ground. Uh, that's going to work all those little intrinsic muscles in your feet. So we can really work on those feet. Good. Was it about muting? Yes. In five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. Okay. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to start to work on just some swaying side to side. Okay. You're a big oak tree. You are not a willow branch. Just you're nice and straight and start to listen to your feet and listen as you feel the weight come from the outside border of one foot to the outside border of the other. Okay. Let's bring your weight all the way over to one side and stay there. Okay. So now my head, my hip and my foot should be stacked on top of each other. And from there, you're going to tap your toe on the ground and then your heel to your calf. Tap and return. What I don't want to see are heads bobbing side to side. I want you to stay on the side. If you need to do it with a wall here, that's fine. Tap and return. Tap and return. If this is easy for you, I want you to bring your toe around and touch the outside of your calf if you have that kind of flexibility. Bring it around and touch the outside. Okay. Or just touch your calf. And I want you to slow it down for five, four, three, two, and one. Very nice job. Let's switch over to the other side. Same thing. Tap and return. Good. Heel and toe. Four. Toe and around the other side. Whatever you're comfortable with. You have to do quite a bit of leaning over to that side to stay there, right? And this knee is nice and soft. Good. And five, four, three, two, and one. Very nice job. Okay, let's shake out those legs for a minute. Okay. Arm out to the side, hand on your hip, or you can gently touch the wall if you need to. And we're going to bring your opposite knee up and down. Up and down. Good. Or you can draw the letter S if you feel like you have the balance to do that. Draw the letter S. Uppercase, lowercase, does not matter to me. You can go script, non-script, whatever you like. S is for sun, because today's a nice sunny day. Good. Or just continue to go up and down. We're going to do three more of these. Good. Two more of these. And last one. Excellent. Let's go to the other side. And let's come on up and down. Good. Or create the letter S. Letter S. Good. I will not be marking for penmanship today. Whatever S you make is fine with me. For five, 
four, three, two, and last one. Excellent. Okay. I like to stretch out your calves and your hip flexors now. We just work those nice hips. If you're near a wall, we can do a calf stretch this way. If you want to try it just by balancing, we're going to do a nice long step forward with one foot. Your back heel is going to be on the ground. Your back toe is slightly in. You're going to feel a little ding toe. I want your belly button in and your back flat. That means I don't want to see a big arch. And we're going to gently bend this front knee, coming down into the stretch until you either feel a little stretch in the hip flexor in the front of your hip or the back of the calf. And I'm going to hold that there for another 20 seconds. For those of you feeling a little stretch in the front of the hip, if you have the coordination to squeeze your glute muscle on that side, you'll feel even more of a stretch in that hip flexor. All right, and let's switch to the other side. Same exact thing. Belly button tight. Let's bend that front knee until you either feel a stretch or you just uh, stop. And 15 more seconds here. And five more. Excellent, let's come on back up. So we're gonna do a little bit of walking now. So if you can back up a few feet, you're gonna need about three to four feet of runway. All right, and from here what we're going to do is you're going to get into your balance position. If it was heel to the inside of the big toe, great. Uh, if that's a challenge, bring a little bit of space between your feet. If not, you can try one foot in front of the other. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to walk forward. Okay, so we're gonna step forward and stop. Okay, step forward and stop. Remember, you're a tightrope walker. You ever see a tightrope walker? The knees are soft. They're using their arms for balance if you need to. Let's step forward and stop. One more step forward and stop. Let's go backwards. Shift your weight back onto the back foot and swing your leg around. Shift your weight back and swing your leg around. Back and around. One more and around. Great. If you want to challenge yourself this time when we go forward again, you can actually bring the foot around and step. For some of you, you're going to be doing multiple steps to get around there. That's fine. The goal ultimately is going to be to swing that leg around. So let's step, step, and step. We're going to do the same thing going backwards now. Great. Slow down your stepping to challenge yourself. Stay short. That won't be hard for some of you. I'm even doing short jokes over Zoom. This is bad. Let's go forward again. Good. Spraying that leg around. You guys are doing great. Great. One more step. And let's go back. If you notice your knees are straightening out, right? Go back, stay soft, go back, and go back. We're gonna do that one more time. If this is easy for you, we can make, a cha uh, we can make a, this a little bit more challenging by turning your head as we're doing the exercise, okay? So let's step forward and turn your head left. Step forward and turn your head right. Step forward and turn your head left. Step forward and turn your head right. Okay. Let's step back and turn your head left. Step back and turn your head right. Step back and turn your head left. 
and step back and turn your head right. It's a great exercise to do because it gets your inner ear working, your vestibular system, right? I can't tell you how many times people have been in a foreign city, they're walking around, they say, oh, and I looked up at the architecture and, and off I stumbled. Um, so just pretend that you're in an art museum and you're looking at the pictures as you go back. You can practice this right in your house, okay? What we're gonna do now is if you have um, a glass of water, wanna grab some water, grab some water. Otherwise, we're gonna go to either a weight or a can of soup. Uh, if you have a can of soup, uh, that, that will suffice. All right. All right, I see most of you are back. Let's grab your, uh, your can of soup or your weight. Uh, we're gonna put it into your left hand. We're gonna step forward with your right foot, a nice long step, or you can hold on to the wall or counter or hand on your knee. You notice my back is flat. My front knee is bent, I'm gonna row up, pulling up towards your armpit, okay? Row up. It's a sawing motion, and your elbow is right by your side. I don't want your elbow out this way. I want it right by your side. Okay. Head and chest are up. We're gonna work those posture muscles. Great. For five, four, three, two, and one, great, let's go to the other side. Nice long step, flat back, row up. Good, like you're trying to elbow someone behind you. The person at the grocery store that's getting a little close. This is a very useful exercise, good. Good, and five, four, three, two, and one. Great. We're gonna put the can into one hand. We're gonna get into your balance position, okay? And we're gonna curl up and down. Up and down. If your shoulders don't bother you, we're gonna do a combined exercise today. You're gonna to curl and press and bring it back down. Curl and press. Good, so I'm bringing the weight right up to my shoulder, elbows inside my body, and I'm pushing up toward the ceiling. If your shoulders bother you, just continue to do your bicep curls. Remember, your knees are softer in this exercise. Good, I'm gonna do three more of these. Two more. And last one, very nice job. Let's switch feet and switch hands. And we're going to either just curl or curl and press. Okay. Curl or curl and press. Sternum is up. Good. And we're going to do three more. Two more. And one. Great. Feet a little wider now, knees are bent. You're gonna hold the sides of the can, okay? And that's all we're gonna do. If you have shoulder issues, we're literally gonna do a circle to here. This is a core exercise. I want your belly button tight, your knees are soft, okay? And we're gonna take that can and we're gonna bring it up to the top and back down. Good, up. Don't let this midsection wiggle at all as you come up. And down, good. Tighten all that stomach up, good. And three, two, and one. Great, let's go to the other side. Good, belly button in. I learned that when I was a very young therapist. I asked a woman once to pull her her belly in, and she said, women do not have bellies. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. So from then on, it's been belly button. Good, nice and tight for three, two, and one. Great, 
Now we're going to start at the top and we're going to go all the way around. So let's start at the top. Okay. And from here, let's come down halfway and then right back up. Halfway and right back up. If it bothers your shoulders, you're literally going to make this move. Come halfway down, bend those knees. Easy on your back for three, two, and one. Let's come to the other side. Try not to bend too much to the side. You're nice and tight for three, two, and one. Excellent job. Um, we're going to get down on the floor now. So if you want to find or onto a bed or another surface, or you can just watch the last few exercises. If you have back problems, we're going to be nice and gentle with these. I've always wanted to lay down on the job and today I get to do it. All right. So if most of you are set, we're going to start off by doing a clamshell exercise. It's going to be done on your side with your knees slightly bent. Okay. Some people are comfortable with their hand up this way. If it strains your neck, you can come down onto a pillow, whatever you're comfortable with. So knees are bent up about 90 degrees. Hand is on your hip. Okay. I want you to roll your hips slightly forward and we're going to open and close your knee. Okay. Your feet stay together for this whole exercise. What? This hand is not moving at all. Otherwise, if this hand is moving, I'm doing it all with my back. And I want to focus on using these hip muscles, which are great for balance. Good. For five, four, three, two, and one. Great. Straighten out the knees now. Let's take the top leg and bring it slightly back towards the back wall. If you need to bend your back leg, that's fine. And we're going to come up and down. Just a little side leg raise. Toes are pointing straight ahead. And we're trying to work these muscles on the side of the hip, which again are great for balance. If you notice my hand is not moving. And we're going to do five more, four, three, two, and one. Great. Let's come onto your back. And from this position, I want your head down your belly button tight, and we're going to do a bridge. Just lifting and pushing through your heels, holding it, and coming back down. If you have lower back problems, this might be irritating, so maybe you just do the pelvic tilt piece, which is just pulling your belly button in and holding for three seconds. Otherwise, let's come on up and back down. Come on up and back down. I'm going to do five more of these. And four. Three. Two. And one. Great. We're going to roll over to the other side and finish up your clamshells and your side leg raises. So again, hands on your hip, hip is slightly forward, feet are stacked on top of each other, and let's open and close the knee. This is great to do if you had a resistance band, to do it above your knees. Um, it really strengthens these muscles back here um, in the glutes, which really can help people with their back, it can help them with their knees. For five, four, three, two, and one. Let's straighten out the legs, or you can bend the bottom knee if it's easier for your balance. We're gonna bring the top leg slightly back towards the back wall, 
and then we're gonna come up and down. Good, and you should be feeling this on the side back of the hip. Good, if you're not, you can roll the hip forward just a little bit. And that hand is not moving for five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. We're going to come onto your back and we're going to do a few more bridges. For those of you that found the bridges easy, you can now try them with one leg extended. Okay? The leg is just hovering off the table. My belly button's tight. And we can do a one legged bridge. If that bothers you, just continue doing it with both feet down on the table or the bed. Okay? But otherwise, we can come on up and down, up and down for two more. Last one. If you're doing one leg, I ask you to switch to the other. Otherwise, you can continue to do your bridges coming up and slowly down for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. With your knees still up, I'm going to have you cross one ankle over your knee, and with the same hand, you're going to push your knee away. Okay? We're just going to work on this hip muscle a little bit to see if we can open up the legs. Okay? So again, I'm doing it with my left leg crossed, and I'm pushing with my left hand to see if I can get a little stretch in my hip. You should not do it if it's bothering your knee or you can just bring your other foot down a little bit. Okay, let's switch to the other side. Again, it's crossing an ankle over your bent knee and gently pushing that knee away. Great, one more stretch. Let's straighten out one leg, and you're going to grab behind your other knee. I'm going to gently pull that knee up towards your chest. If you want to get a little bit more of an aggressive stretch, your knees don't bother you, you can interlace your hands over the knee and gently pull that knee up towards your chest. Okay, let's straighten that leg out, and we're going to go to the other knee and pull it up toward your chest or on the top of the knee if your knees don't bother you. All right, and with that, we are done. I hope that you all did well with your class today. And like I said, uh, hopefully you can get outside. I hope that you all uh, have a great day. Take care.